Okay, welcome everyone to the Monks podcast. And we have Shamananda and Chetan Charan with us. They have decades of experience in uh, sharing spiritual wisdom in contemporary times. And today also we have a very interesting topic uh, with us. And we would like to uh, have them share with us uh, wisdom nuggets, especially in the uh, troubled times. The topic for today is finding inner anchors amidst outer storms. We have seen storms in different parts of the world, different versions. There are tsunamis, earthquakes, etc. What we are seeing now is of a peculiar kind because due to this storm, we have been asked to be inside our homes. It, that's the sort of mandate to put a curb on this storm. So now as a common person sitting inside my home, looking outside the balcony at empty roads, what do I do as a spiritual seeker, as somebody who is looking for enduring meaning in life? How do I process this outer storm which is going outside my home? And while sitting inside, what should I do so that uh, at least when this storm abates, there's some wisdom. I've added some meaning. Um, and these months, I hope, have not gotten wasted like that. So what do you all have to share in this regard? Hmm. You want to start, Chaman? No, you can start. Okay. The Bhagavad Gita explains that in our existence is three level. There is the body, the mind, and the spirit. So the spirit is the source of consciousness, and consciousness, you can say this a consciousness comes from the spirit, radiates through the mind to the body, and then it goes outward to the physical world. And usually our consciousness goes toward the things that we are most attached to. So if we come to a room and say we are eager to eat some food, then our first attention might go to the fridge and what is there over there in that. So generally our consciousness is caught at the physical level of reality at, in various objects depending on what we are attached to. And accordingly we do various activities. Maybe physically go here, travel there, do this and do that. But when the physical level of activities is curtailed mm. that can become very frustrating because consciousness by nature is dynamic it wants to explore so then what we need to do is we have to take this consciousness on an inner journey instead of it going outward it can go inward so consciousness going inward is the essence of the spiritual journey now, when our consciousness goes inward, often, as I said, there's a spirit, there is the mind and there's the body. If the consciousness comes at the level of the mind, it goes into fantasy land. So the mind can imagine uh, various things, either good or bad, about the past or the future. And now, of course, with uh, entertainment being a big industry, different people's minds, imaginations can also come up and we consume data things digitally and basically it's either we, our consciousness gets caught in our mind or in the products of others mind. So when we are caught at the mental level that is not uh, necessarily going inward in terms of learning anything meaningful. We need to go beyond the mind and its various moods and fantasies to the level of spirit. So we could put it now we could put it horizontally or we could put it vertically at the physical, mental and spiritual level of reality. So our consciousness needs to rise to the spiritual level. And there we can experience ourselves. We can experience calmness. We can experience clarity. We can experience ourselves as observers different from our situations and different from our emotions. So the situations come at the physical level, the emotions come at the mental level. 
but we are different from the both of them just as sometimes we can notice this person is uh, this person is speaking things which are making me bored now mm. so that is a physical level of perception mm. but you can also observe okay now i am feeling bored so this person is making me bored that is a situation i am feeling bored that is the emotion mm. so we can be the observer of our situations and the observer of our emotions also mm. so once we recognize that we are observers mm. that the time we can gain a significant level of freedom from our situations and our emotions because we understand that actually i am different i am different from both of these so when we are too caught in our physical situations or in our mental emotions then we rarely if ever realize that we are observers mm. so to find shelter internally means that the storms come not only at the physical level in terms of problems but the storms it's come even more at the mental level in terms of our uncontrolled reactions to those problems like right now there's a health pandemic but along with that there is also a concern that there might be a mental pandemic people mm -hmm. could become depressed people can become panicky people can become lonely and those are all storms at the level of the mind so by going inward to the level of the spirit we can go beyond both the physical and the mental storms and find spiritual shelter okay thank you thank you i especially like the part where you emphasized training oneself to be the observer mm -hmm. so i would just uh, begin my answer i won't cover the solution part when you say nicely put harivansha that if i see outside what do i see and uh, what do i do with this situation was that you was that your summarization or when you said that in today's times i see outside empty streets there no one there so how do i relate to that or yes. could you just paraphrase your question yes. your first yes kamananda uh, i don't see anybody outside and i am not used to seeing inside so this this kind of dark clouds of outer storm how do i process and i how, how do i meet some meaning out of my stay inside my home all right so a very popular uh, americanism like when you say english there is also some people who say don't call it english this is american english is the language spoken in england this is america so if i use the word in american if life throws a lemons at you what do you do so one simple answer was make lemonade so a lemon is like a storm Another situation that is catch the lemon and throw it at someone else <laughs> <laughs> that is a blame game <laughs> so uh, so life suddenly has thrown not just a lemon but the biggest lemon ever in the last maybe 80 90 years after the spanish flu now it is surprising that about say 55 million or so people were maimed or injured or killed in the first world war and more people were affected by the spanish influenza epidemic but that is not seen as a major killer so humanity tends to see humans as the more than shakers more than nature what nature does uh is sometimes just taken out of the history books and history mainly is filled with the exploits of humans so today nature has shown how helpless we are so this is a big lemon thrown at us and i compare today's civilization actually any civilization you can compare like that with a person who goes with a heavy makeup day in day out that is the kind of face he or she would like to show the world and imagine that person going 
to perform on stage or on the way and somebody just throws two three pails of cold water on his face and all of a sudden there is no makeup now and with that situation that person runs back to his apartment closes the door and shrieks in horror as to what he sees in the mirror but there is no freak or a uh, kind of a horror figure there it is he himself so from whom are you running away or who is that hideous figure in the mirror it is you but all these years you harbored cultivated a kind of a persona which you were not and what were your makeup paraphernalia it was gadgets it was the facebook likes it was uh, the so called popularity the so called proliferation of marvel movies one after another raking in billion dollars plus the kind of exotic vacations the kind of coupons you got free on the internet 30% off 80% off and you thought life was great and now you cannot do almost all of these and you feel as if i am lost mm. a very popular phrase in one of the greatest bhakti texts shrimad bhagwat is a nashta vittam niva a person losing his wealth feels i am lost mm. well he is not lost so when you look at the grim or kind of uh, desolate scenario outside it is not the end of the world mm -hmm. but the kind of life you were leading is has kind of programmed you into thinking this is the end of the world if i don't see a new mcdonald's breakfast special if i don't see a something discount off on quality shoes or some jewelry or some exotic vacation or a hotel resort available for just 299 dollars for 3 days so because these is these are all the layers it's almost like a uh, photoshop image of mind with 15 layers of so many things added so the computer may tell me that this is how i look but all it needs to remove those layers is just one mouse click so with a digital click material nature has just removed all the layers and now we are told that now deal with this so we said deal with what this is not me this is the real you welcome to yourself so now you need to know whether in my life i have uh anchor this, this i like this title very much in this storm which are the anchors and suddenly humanity like a ill trained deck boy i'm using a maritime technology term he just goes on the deck and the captain says get the anchor and he says sorry sir what do you mean he said you don't know what the anchor is the no never used it even once so he tells go down you see this big strong iron thing and get it up hurry up so i will come to the anchors when we discuss that but this is my small assessment of uh, this scenario which we are facing today thank you so 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 nicely put with all the examples thank you chetan chan and shamananda i think both of you um, mentioned that about this anchor part chetan chan you said about the the real us the spirit behind body and mind and we are seeing that today isn't it people are not bothered about gold bricks or some other essentials but we see huge lines in front of potato and tomato counters those have become the essential oh, really? so so what is the real essential 
what is the real anchor and and uh, you mentioned about observer but maybe if you can add more that how do we practice so that we start living uh, being anchored in that way more 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 pragmatic more practical yeah hmm. okay so i felt that shamananda spoke very vividly about the things in which our consciousness is currently invested and we could say not just invested but trapped sometimes when we talk about investment it's a conscious placement of our money but sometimes after we place it we can't take it out then it gets trapped mm-hmm. so our consciousness is often trapped in certain things and in, in many ways technological advancement means that we are given more and more avenues for enticing and entrapping our consciousness mm-hmm. and then suddenly most of those avenues are taken away from us mm-hmm. so that's the time when we recognize that okay that i have got myself invested so much in these things but are those things really important for me and uh, so if things change just like in a ocean when there is a storm then what stabilizes the ship is the anchor so <clears throat> when the the ocean is smooth we may not even require the need of an anchor require an anchor or even recognize that we will ever need an anchor also but when the ocean becomes stormy that means as i said the we are like in an ocean and the waves are becoming stormy now in terms things that gave us comfort and pleasure are suddenly being interrupted that is the time when we need an anchor so it is time to disinvest our consciousness from outer things and reinvest it in inner things so see within go within uh, these are often common themes but uh, they can seem very abstract for many of us if we go within it's uh, it's not very peaceful it said that many people speak because they find speech more tolerable than silence because mm-hmm. when they are not speaking their mind is shrieking inside them mm-hmm. and this problem, <laughs> that, that problem that problem that problem so it's interesting in the bhagavad gita krishna talks about uh, discipline of the body of the speech and of the mind and there he talks about mauna mauna is the vow of silence but krishna talks about mauna as the discipline of the mind not discipline of the body he says that mana prasada samyatvam mauna matva vinigraha bhav samshuddhriti etat tapo manasam uchyate so real silence is not simply zipping our lips real silence is calming our mind and if the mind is not calm then going within simply means encountering a wild mind so we need to have a process, we need to go on an inner journey beyond the mind so normally if you are to go on a journey say we are Uh, we are going from place a to place we say from mumbai to pune or we are going from la to san francisco so then we basically need two things one is a map and the second is a vehicle mm-hmm. similarly for going on an inner journey we need these two things we need a map of the inner territory and we need a vehicle to take us now take us means to take our consciousness on the inner journey so consciousness is like the light of awareness and our consciousness goes through various things so this light of awareness has to go inward so first we need a map and spiritual wisdom texts like the bhagavad gita can be that map and they show us what the inner territory is mm-hmm. they help us understand okay this is this is the mind this is the spirit these are the various uh, passions impressions stored within the mind 
so this is of course not a visual perception but a con conceptual comprehension mm -hmm. but even for that we need a map a, uh, a guide to the territory and then the vehicle is actually the process of yoga so the yogic practices are meant to act as tools or vehicles for us to take our consciousness on this inner journey so so yoga is not just about sitting in a particular pose or intoning a particular sound or visualizing a particular object or any of these things yes these can be useful but they are all meant to take us on that journey mm -hmm. so the idea is that we start with some outer object of focus and then we go toward an inner object of focus mm -hmm. so for example in the bhagavad gita when it talks about the process of yoga it states that you sit in a, a sit in a comfortable yogic posture and then focus on the tip of the nose or samam kaya shiro grivam dharay machalam sthiram sampreksha nasika gramsvam nasika gramsvam or it also say that's in the 6th chapter in the 5th chapter it says bruva or madhye focus on the space between the eyebrows now it's the important thing is that take one external point which is stable now actually speaking we cannot very easily see the tip of our nose or the space between our eyebrows but what happens by trying to focus on that one point that becomes like a like a anchor which can draw our which can calm our consciousness which is otherwise dissipated in so many outer things and then gradually the consciousness can be drawn inward so this is one tool just like when we are driving a vehicle the vehicle has different uh, different uh, levers and buttons for doing different operations so calming uh, noticing our breath and slowing our breath and calming our breath focusing on our breath that's also another tool mantras are also another tool so when we use these tools these vehicles then gradually we can start going inward and we go inward beyond physical reality to the mental and eventually to the spiritual level of reality and that's where we can start experiencing an unchanging core and when we come to that unchanging core we start experiencing stability we start experiencing shelter we start experiencing security inside us mm -hmm. thank you uh, i had heard this many years ago and i was quite uh, fascinated by the this concept that in life you have to find a center where there is no chaos because the larger your circle grows you will find that on the circumference there is too much happening too much of a chaos mm -hmm. so if you let go of the center you will be caught in this turmoil and heaven forbid if you are thrown away then uh, i am i'm basically a economic student but if i remember my geometry a tangent is when that line touches just one point in the circle right and it the yeah the <laughs> the faster is your speed the longer are you thrown away <laughs> is it not if you are if you are whirling at top speed and then you let go of the center that acceleration will take you far away from the center so it's like one hand has to be always touching the center so call it a anchor or call it uh, that particular point which you should never let go i have these three things so call it three anchors or three aspects of one anchor and uh, in simply put it means your daily spiritual regimen the community with which you align yourself either physically or in today's times 
uh, in a virtual way. And third is either your service per se, the physical aspect of service, or service attitude. So these are the three S's. Daily practice is the sadhana, community is the sangha, and service attitude is seva. So almost all transcendental, bona fide transcendental practices have this thing of something which you do daily. It is as much as a piano performer practicing daily. There's a very famous statement by one great pianist that I don't practice for seven days and I can notice it. I don't practice for 15 days and the audience can notice it. So I need to do something as a daily practice, which is called sadhana. And it is as basic as someone trying to make it big in the 100 meters in the Olympics. He does jogging, swimming, even plays chess. Now what chess has to do with his 100 meter sprint? But the person says, it helps me keep my mind focused. So whatever helps, the goal is to break that 10 second barrier for the 100 meters. So your daily practice in the bhakti tradition could be your daily japa, private meditation, or your daily reading of the sacred texts, discussion of the sacred texts. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the sadhana part. And community, now sometimes there could be a mini storm within these three S's. <laughs> that also is possible. Like you just don't feel like getting up in the morning. You don't feel like doing that practice. You say, I did for 30 years and it has not worked so far. So what if I lose one day? You know, what more will it, uh, what more kind of damage will happen because of that? So that time you need a reminder. Or sometimes the reminder could be just a gentle or a not so gentle kick on the backside, but it is required. So you need a kindled support system. You need someone like you. So when uh, that friend or that fellow pilgrim, there's an arrangement that if you feel down, then call me. And if I feel down, I'll call you. And more than anything, all it needs is that is someone who cares about you. So that's, that's the daily practice part. In the Sangha, because of this particular age, even though your, your goal is the same, still there could be disagreements. We are all humans. We are all unique individuals. So even if the goal is the same, there could be disagreements. So, it is said that when there is a problem with your daily practice, take help of the community and your core seva attitude. If there's a problem with the community, take shelter of your daily practice and your seva attitude. And if there's a problem with your seva attitude, take shelter of your daily practice and your sangha. So like an equilateral triangle, this particular differently shaped anchor can be of immense help. Wow, mm. this, is, this is amazing. Uh, uh, the Monks podcast is now podcasting the sutras. Chaitanya Charan <laughs> maps and vehicle. <laughs> and uh, Ramananda, uh, starting with S, gave three S's more. Sadhana, uh, Sangha, and Seva. So, so grateful that uh, you have put it in such a concise manner. Um, I would like to ask, and maybe this could be our last question of the day, something which is closer to your personal practices. Um, I saw you mentioning Bhagavad Gita, the book, and also the practice like Japa. So, 
would you like to shed more light uh, on how especially in these times Bhagavad Gita stands out and you I think you mentioned about Japa also mantras also how those also stand out and they have something tangible to offer to one and all and if you can also top it up with some of your own other mantras like how they can how we can a person hearing you all in this podcast can go right away and implement them with with very less incubation period <laughs> so hmm. okay if i i'll connect this with the previous points i was thinking that i i did a somewhat mixing of metaphors because generally anchor is a nautical metaphor in a ship but then i talked about a journey with a vehicle and a map so of course we need a vehicle and a map we need a ship and a map if you are going on ocean also so there are two distinct things over here one is realizing our ultimate spirituality we understand ourselves to be the soul who is the observer mm-hmm. we also understand that beyond the soul is the whole the divine who is the supreme observer so realizing that is the ultimate shelter however while we are on the process to realizing that the process itself can become like a shelter okay just like but if we are literally in a ocean the waves will hit us much more but if we are in a ship in a sturdy ship then that can shelter us if we are in a ship that is well anchored that can shelter us even more if we take the ship and reach the land then we are best anchored so we could put it that when we have no spiritual understanding or spiritual practices then we are simply in the ocean we are at the mercy of whatever waves may come and toss us here there and everywhere but when we gain some spiritual understanding and start having spiritual practices so if we put put sadhana seva and sangha all three as uh, as comprising the vehicle then as comprising the ship then we get these all three can shelter us from the stormy waves now within these we may find one of these maybe as the most empowering or enriching or nourishing for us at particular times and others may not nourish us at that particular time and which one that will be can vary from situation to situation sometimes we may be with people who don't understand us so well even sometimes among spiritually minded people there can be differences of opinion and the most most painful loneliness is not when we are we are physically alone it is it is when we are surrounded by people who don't understand us so we can sometimes feel not understood and we can be lonely maybe that is the time when we need to turn towards our service or we need to turn towards our sadhana and we get that as our anchor so the ship when it is anchored it is much stabler so we have our practices and they themselves are like the ship for us but within those practices some practice helps us become stabler and that can become our anchor mm. and for each of us the anchor may be different and for each of us at different times the anchor might be different also mm. and by sheltering ourselves with these anchors we can stabilize ourselves among these storms and then we keep moving forward and as we keep moving forward eventually we will reach the shore so reaching the shore is perceiving our own spirituality first hand it is we intellectually understand now that i am a spiritual being separate from my body and my mind 
but when we experientially realize it and we situated in that level of realization brahmavit brahmani sthitah the bhagavad gita in 520 says that not only do we have spiritual knowledge but we have we are spiritual situated brahmani sthitah that's the time when the ups and downs of life don't disturb us so much na praharishet priyam prapya no dvijet prapya cha priyam that there is uh, we don't get elated when there is pleasure or success and we don't get dejected when there is pain or failure so it say that for each one of us for me i find words spiritually directed words as a important anchor so it could be verses of the bhagavad gita and other scriptures it could be concise thoughts based on the wisdom of the gita so words are for me the anchor by which we i can access krishna and connect with krishna access and with uh, with access the ultimate reality and so each of us can find out the anchor that works the best for us mm-hmm. and that's how we can move forward so for me i find words connected with spiritual reality are are a, quite a accessible and relishable anchor thank you that was very very nice i would say that uh, to to conclude as to we have these three s's your daily practice your community and your own uh, core which is your service attitude seeing the example of previous greats and how they went through their own crises um, just to give an example i was reading about abraham lincoln now he was a political figure and during the course of his life he also got some kind of his pox there is small pox but there are other varieties of pox mm-hmm. and which are also viral fevers so he brushed it off by saying i don't think it will disfigure me any more than what i am now <laughs> okay so so today from today's political leaders point of view uh such kind of uh, like rock hard uh, steadiness is certainly could be seen as worshipable so when i read the biographies of uh great bhakti yogis who are stalwarts in wisdom as well as practice so that kind of solidifies the for example the daily practice i read that the founder of the great founder of the gaudiya math uh shri shrimad bhakti siddhanta sarathi he took a vow of a daily regimen of private meditation japa and it was 1 billion names that was the sankalpa that was the target and he had a small thatched hut and when it would rain he didn't even bother to mend it or repair it he just took a umbrella in the left hand and with the right hand he did it so this kind of a dedication to one's personal practice and then in the life of bhaktivedant swami prabhupada who founded this international society for krishna consciousness four decades of steady uh kind of preparation for launching a worldwide effort which itself is a novelty which was never done before with this gusto with this enthusiasm and with this urgency so as they say when you see a flower vase and it says unbreakable the very first urge is to dash it to the ground isn't it to just see whether it is unbreakable or not <laughs> and if and if someone says it is unbreakable till you don't drop it then we know there is something wrong so so when when he says that somebody is a sage of steady mind or a steady character it means that that this is a ship which has weathered a lot of storm 
it means a real storm it was not a cgi thing it was not a computer generated in, interface where you could just put a wooden ship on a green screen of lot of uh, storms and everything happening it's a real thing so similarly we also are being put through this help is there there is a lot of evidence that people far worse situation than you and me or all of us put together and they have weathered that and that should be our center point so if we cling to that center and somehow we have to work on the circumference whether it is a job in walmart or amazon or with uh, in a bangalore startup or whatever we can weather this storm and we can come out victorious very nice very nice uh our spirituality does not promise us a stormless sea but it can provide us an unsinkable ship yes oh very nice thank you very nice so i think we are almost uh, towards the end of our fantastic yes. podcast and if you will allow me to put an effort to do some summary in terms please, of please those uh, so, s for summary and i will have many s s's for <laughs> um, uh the yardstick the milestones whatever you call inspired by both of you sadhna seva seva and uh, um you were telling about sink you know uh, unsinkable ship so the first level is a stormy sea and that's our usual status when it is uncontrollable our mind is going through much more stormy um phenomenon than the outer storms right and then we try to put a sturdy ship again to ss and that sturdy ship is comprising of sadhana seva and sangha within them we have an anchor which could be a particular expression of sadhana sangha or seva which will which acts as an anchor for the ship and finally when that journey has been taken as shamananda said storms of the stormy sea will come but now we have a sturdy ship we'll reach shore and that shore is a real anchor our real happiness and then looking back what would be the compass to make sure that the stormy sea is navigated by the sturdy ship to come to a shore is the shoulders or i would say that um, the stalwarts right following the stalwarts so another <laughs> <laughs> so we have s is here so that's clever <laughs> i'm very grateful it's such a wonderful discussion today and i'm sure um you can add one more as yes. scripture can be the map <laughs> scripture can be the map yes the compass stalwart scripture is the map <laughs> yeah. yeah good summary okay so thank i think we call it a day today here thank you very much thank you thank you very nice and looking forward to having you all in our podcast next time Take care be safe thank you